Last year's has had a massive year and not all of it's been good. Yasmin Abdel Majid, 26 years old, mechanical engineer, rev head, social justice advocate and TV presenter. How do you keep kids out of trouble? The Muslim daughter of Sudanese migrants, she has a huge personality. What do you think of the boldest feminists today? Well, you're one of them. Oh, stop. <laughs> but after a big run-in with former Senator Jackie Lambie in February... Do you know what Sharia law is? Yes, but it doesn't what, have... Do you know rights? what it is? Me Are you praying for five Sharia law? Think, what about the equal you, rights you for know, women? What, excuse me, Islam to me is one of the most... is the most feminist religion. Yasmin's popularity took a nasty turn. This lady is willing to denigrate Australian values. Does the minister agree with Mrs abdul Magid's view that the Islamic political ideology is feminist? Then after a Facebook post on Anzac Day, just seven words, lest we forget, Manus, Nauru, Syria, Palestine. The blowback was brutal. It wasn't ignorant, no, she was just being a bitch. I don't give a stuff if she's brown, Muslim or whatever, She's full of shit and I called her out on it. Where someone comes here and craps all over our oh traditions, God. our culture and our values. She's actually done her dash with most Australians who will never forget her comment. Never. Yasmin said she became the most hated Muslim in Australia and left for London. Lest we forget, Yasmin, that you are brown, you are Muslim and you are a girl and it's the only reason you have a job at the ABC. But now she's back in Australia briefly and ready to talk about what the hell just happened. Please welcome Yasmin Adam Majid. That was like, thanks for really summing it up for me. I'd forgotten most of yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, they give you a warm applause, so you can take yeah, something from thank that. You. But yeah. how, how does it feel looking at that now? I mean, like, wild. It's, it kind of, you know, I went from being like, this, you know, I was young Queenslander of the year and kind of on all these boards and councils and I was like the good Muslim girl, the darling, neck minute, it's like everything exploded. So it's, it's surreal, I think, to look back on it and be like, oh, that's, that was my year, right? They're, oh, they're talking about me. She's calling me a bitch? Oh, she did not, right? <laughs> and, um... I mean, obviously, super traumatic, but I think it's kind of... I'm in a place now where I'm like... Well, they took everything away from me. I'm now someone with nothing left to lose. And that's kind of amazing. It means I can say what I want. I have, um... I think the nice version of saying it is, like, no shits left to give. Um, mm -hmm. And, yeah, that in a way... I mean, like, in all seriousness, um... It was... Like, yeah, I guess I was looking at it and I'm like, oh, wow, that, that was really, really bad. But at the same time, you don't know how strong you are until you've been through something really hard, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it showed me that, oh, I'm just some 26-year-old and I can have the full weight of social media, mainstream media, the government and public opinion against me and I'm going to come out on top. Like, what of it? <laughs> Do you feel... I, I get what you're saying, cos you've, you've risen and learnt and kind of emerged like a phoenix from all of this, and that is fantastic. But do you look back and think, you know, I could have done it a bit differently or I regret what I did? Do you look back and think, wish I hadn't quite done it that way? I don't think, like, thinking about that will make any difference, to be perfectly honest. Like, it happened. And everybody's advice did not work, right? Everyone was like, oh, it'll only be a couple of days. Oh, they'll get over it soon. Yeah. And it was like three months later. And I'm like, they're still turning up to my events, you know, with school children taking... They're still reporting on my tweets about my periods. Like, mm -hmm. I don't know what more I could actually do to fix it. And, so... And it was... The Correct me if I'm wrong, but the, face, the post was only up for an hour. Like, you took it down and apologised. Pretty much instantly. So a friend got in touch with you yep. and said, you know, do you, you might want to think about this. What was your decision I was, I was like, nah, man, no one's going to think about it that way. Like, <laughs> no. I don't know what you're talking about. They were like, yeah. you should probably, like, just think about it again because it's kind of offensive. And at that point, I was like, oh, well, if my friend's hurt by it, well, sure, I'll take it down and I'll apologise. And I actually didn't look at any of the... There was, like, comments and stuff underneath, I think. I didn't look at it... <laughs> And I literally took a nap, right? It was the last <laughs> nap I ever took, yeah. right? I was like, oh, well, I fixed that, you know, I'm going to have a nap, it's a public holiday. I woke up and, my, and one of my friends messaged me and was like, you're on the front page of The Australian. And then the next day was like, I think it was The Daily Telegraph, and they used the worst photo of all time, right, and clearly couldn't count. Um, and, like, you know, 
everyone knows everyone, every, the rest of the story. But um, yeah, it, it didn't really matter. Like there was like quite a long period of time afterwards that I didn't say anything in public. Because everyone was like, just write it out. Mm. There's nothing that you can say that'll make it any better. And I think that's what everyone thought. That's why a lot of the big institutions that I thought should have supported me didn't support me, because I think they all thought, it'll be over soon. Right. And when, I, when I'm overseas, I live in London now, and I try to explain to people what happened, and they're like, they can't understand why it, it, like, it became this, the phenomena that it became. But I, I'm really interested that you, re, you tweeted again, I think, just before Remembrance Day, so on November 10, you retweeted the message, um, lest we forget manners. Now, is that for controversial? What was your motivation in that? Well, I mean, if you look at my tweets the previous days, I'd been talking about manners quite a lot, mm. right? And also, let us not forget that right now there are over 400 men on our watch, our money in what is being called by like international um, agencies as a human, like a man-made humanitarian crisis. This is not some war in Syria. This is not something happening on the other side of the world. This is men that are being really cruelly treated at the hands of us, our Australian government, our taxpayer money, and we're not doing anything about it. So you know what? The last time I tweeted something like this, it caused a lot of fuss. So I thought maybe I will use this opportunity again to bring to light something that is really important and the plight of people that is... And maybe, just maybe, they'll stop focusing on my tweet and the actual issue at hand. Maybe. So you're in London now? Yes. You're doing lots of glo global public speaking. I yeah. Think it, was there a TED talk involved? Yeah, so I did a there? TED talk in Colorado. I just sold out a gig at NYU in New York. Um, I've come from Canada, um, Paris. I'm sort of doing, yeah, touring kind of all over the world, um, writing another book, which is awesome, a young adult fiction book, pitching a couple of television shows, learning French. So, like, just chilling out, really. Do you miss yeah. living in Australia? I miss the weather. <laughs> what do you, how, how do you describe when people ask you about Australia, what do you say about Australia now? It's hard, you know, like, I... It's like... Um, you know, dating an abusive guy. Right? You love a lot of things about them, but they hurt you deep. So what do you do? What do you tell people? Do you tell them about the great times that you had, about how grateful you were for all the good stuff? Or do you tell them that they traumatised you in a way that you will never be the same for? Mm. Too deep? Too deep? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about straws. Uh, yes. <laughs> One hole or two? Well, well, like, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Um, unfortunately, know. we are out of time there, but thank you very much for coming in. Would you please thank Yasmin Abdul Majid?